so it's hungry time on my plot or the hungry gap and I guess the hungry gap is different things for different people it depends what you grow and of course when you start growing things and if you grow through the winter I'm sure it makes a substantial difference but I don't I grow winter crops that are able to be harvested in the winter but I don't grow anything new in the really cold weather and that's a lot to do with the climate that's here this morning I'm going to pull in what's left really or most of the things that are left uh, just to make some vegetable stews and I'll show you what I'm going to bring in at this time of year and in a lot of cases there's a bit of an ulterior motive because I'm also trying to empty the beds, pour the compost over and let them sit a while before I start growing in them again. I'll show you what I'm going to be pulling today. So as you look over the plot, there seems to be a fair amount of foliage. Of course, some of that is newness with the garlic, which is just starting. The purple sprouting broccoli, which we're beginning to feed from now. And we're not going to be taking that today because that really is a crop that is designed to be utilized at this moment. Here we've got some of the leeks that I left in and we've eaten that whole bed's worth of leeks. But I'm going to take a couple of these today and they're beginning to look tired. And we've got quite a lot that are going to seed. In fact, nearly all of them. And that means that there's going to be a hard core in those leeks. It doesn't mean that it's inedible because a lot of the flesh around that hard core is perfectly edible but I'm going to pick the ones that I can that haven't gone to seed first just so that we eat the best first. I've got some celeriac left and these never really got particularly big but you can see here they're a reasonable size and there's only three left so all three of those are coming out and then I can drag this compost which I piled extra high right the way across the bed and that'll leave the bed in good order ready for the next growing session and over here we've got some even smaller celeriac which I'm going to leave I'm going to leave those for a little bit longer I'm not in a hurry to get that bed prepared so if I get a little bit more height out of them then that'll be perfect the Cavallo Nero style kel is, well, becoming an odd shape. You can see that there's lots of small growth in here, but I'm going to utilize that. I'm going to take these small shoots. Let's just break one off and show you. You can see where I took out the top and these shoots, they really are very tender and tasty. So. These are the plants of the winter that just keep on giving and we'll use most of this and anything that's left ends up with the chickens and they absolutely adore it. So, kale, leeks, celeriac. The other thing that I'm gonna pull, probably the last of, is in the polytunnel. I'll show you. So here we are with the carrots and there's just two left or three left and they're not going to be particularly big. There's one and these have got a little bit of root fly on them and there's still plenty to eat from that and then the last one. So there we are, there's the last carrots of the season and that enables me to just clear this bed, make sure there's no rotting foliage on top and we've got a little bit of grass growth here which is just spreading and I need to take that out. I don't want that getting any worse but as I dig down and break the surface of this so I will be able to pull out any roots. So that's the last of 
the vegetables I'm going to gather together. I'll do that and show you the end result. And through the magic of filming, I can show you the end product. And that looks mighty fine. And these beetroots, I hadn't planned to take them out, but they're very small. They usually get very woody at this time of year, but because they're still small, they still look very good. So they're coming home with me too. And I've got a nice barrow load of material to add to the compost. And because I was able to get those beetroot out, I've now spread the compost across two more bays. And this area is pretty much done now, apart from the celeriac, which won't be in for a lot longer now. I'm ready with these eight beds. I noticed I've got a bit of a mound in there. I don't know whether I just left a mound of compost or whether the mold's pushed up in there, but I'll see when I get into it. One of the things I have got to fix is this bar and they were bracketed at the bottom. That's probably not the best method. I think putting something metal or at least something that protrudes out and goes down deep and I can put the hoop over the top. I think that would be a lot more successful. Right, well, I only popped across to get some food and the plot's still giving. It won't be much longer before the winter crops are out and we'll be getting on to growing anew. Well, there is concern in the community that this compost heap, which is cooled right down, might not kill the seeds. And it's a good point. And although I leave this for the whole year and I've never had a problem, it does remind me that I did turn compost heaps last year and this one's sitting at 20, which is nothing like what it needs to be. So there's nothing short of getting this compost out. And because of the arrangement I've got of these bins, that's a pretty easy objective. So I'm going to whip the cover off, take the screen from the front and pull it all down onto the surface and then just put it back. And that will cause a lot of more air spaces inside here. And I'll add a bit of water as well to get things cooking. And we'll see if we can get the temperature up. Of course, when it comes out and you lighten it all up, get some air in it and it's not so compact. So it appears to be a huge amount. And there we are, we're down to the bottom in here and it's still very moist in and I'm not going to add any water because having turned that over, I can see that it is pretty moist. So this aeration will do a good job of work and I'll, uh, just move that back in now, because that's the game. And hopefully we'll cover it up and watch it warm up over the next few days. Right, firstly out, now back in. There she blows. Now, tucked up nicely, a couple of layers, this nice warm underlay, a bit of carpet, and we'll see if that does the job. I'm hopeful that it will. And I made a mistake with that heap, as one or two subscribers pointed out, in not covering it from the get-go. And it's, it was in quite a wet period, and I think it might have got a little bit too wet. So it's well aerated now. It's dried out a bit. There's no anaerobic activity going on. So fingers crossed. And this one still up at the late 50s, certainly in the green area, which is great news. So compost done for today. And while well, the clouds up there are looking a little bit as though they might rain on me, but I think it's time to move some more clay. Let's go. So it's time to look at this clay again. And wow, I keep getting such great ideas. And 
one viewer said, why don't you keep it and make bricks out of it? Wow, you probably could make bricks out of this. So, jury's out really whether I'm going to take this all the way down to the same level as the rest of the fruit garden or whether I'm going to build a retaining wall here. I'm more warming to the idea of using the wood I've got for creating the raised beds that I've rotted through. So at the moment, I'm just going to keep going down and taking layers off this, but I am going to start storing these great big lumps of clay for the ideas that I've been given over in the bed that keeps getting encroached by weed. So I'm going to take a whole barrow of the best cuts and then we'll see how that goes. I'll store it over there and then carry on moving some things down to the bottom to raise the level. Right, best cuts and onward. a lot flatter and I think I'm going to save some inner energy for tomorrow now because tomorrow I've got another delivery of horse manure but I feel like I'm getting on top of this now there's certainly no hump so I think next time I've got a whole load of energy left I'm going to take another thick layer off of that clay we should really be getting down to some soil then the soil seems to start fairly high up here. So I think there's probably just that top layer, maybe a foot to come off. And then I can see what I've got anyway and make my plans accordingly. Probably tidy up this area when I do it. Okay, that's me done for today. Back tomorrow. Well, I'd say three quarters of a load today. Shouldn't take me too long. I've just got to decide what I do with that because I've got three compost bays on the go and I just need to think whether I'm going to top them all off or quite what I'm going to do. I think I'm favouring top them off. So let's have a look. You get a good look at the growing clay mound down here following yesterday's movement as i say it's growing i'm going to come all the way out here get a bit of this height up and then when it's dried out i can drag it across a bit more somebody suggested that perhaps i move my potatoes over to those difficult beds and use this as a growing area but to be honest with you, it gets quite a lot of shade from all these tall bushes and trees and the apple tree and the black currant. So it's not great. Ideal for potatoes because they don't dry out, but not so great for general growing. Right, what do we got here? Okay, well, this one I took out and put back yesterday. So I don't really want to touch that. I think I don't know if you remember, but the height of this was right up here, about a foot higher. So I could take the covers off and fill that some more. And I've got this one down here, which was put together last week. And there's plenty of room in there. So I think I'm going to remove covers and just do a fill up. I won't bore you with that because you've seen it. Good to see the chicks up on the climbing frame this morning. <sighs> well, Mrs. K has come over to give the chickens a bit of a treat. And she's bought me a cup of coffee. Now that's waitress service on our allotment. Can't fault her. Good times. Well, 
Well, that went in very well. Top that one off nicely. It's bulging at the seams now. That's okay, because at some point I'll have to have that out, turn it over and put it back. And at that point, I'll straighten that one out, much like I did that one over there. And then this fella, gosh, it takes a lot. That's just topped off now, and that will shrink down over the next week or two. But we're going well. When you think that this area was in a bit of disarray only a few weeks ago, and all the bays were emptied, and I spread the compost, and now they're filling back up and getting ready for a year of turning into nice sweet compost. And I will top this one off next. Again, it was right up to the top there and it sunk right down. Hopefully that one will lift in temperature and then we'll top it off and hopefully get it cracking on again. Right, what's next? Well, last act of today, I think is just to take my Killington hoe and get some of this next layer of clay up so that I can move it. And it's coming on. When I stood on the path yesterday and I looked across here, it looked less red. And I think I might just be sort of bringing up a little bit of soil, but I don't know. When I dig down now, it looks pretty red to me. So just gonna break this up. And then that'll be me done for today, I think. Whew, that was a blow. There we are, plenty of red left. I was just kidding myself, clearly. I went down a little bit deeper there. I can see a bit of brown earth underneath that. So I got some hope, but we're certainly getting into the depths of it now. Well, that's me done for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, why not click the like button and maybe subscribe. And if you like my videos, then why not click the bell at the top and you'll get notifications of my uploads every Sunday and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Good times.